Welcome! Welcome to chapter 30 of Anecdotes of a Light-Skinned Gentleman. How is everyone? How, how are we all doing today? Because uh, I'm doing well. I feel like it's been forever since the last podcast. Because it has been. It's Wednesday and um, the podcast is supposed to go up on Monday. But I have been flat out. Absolutely busy. I've just come back from... Canberra and Gold Coast, well we went to Canberra on Thursday and then left to Gold Coast on the Saturday, this is for the Try and Stop Me Tour, Lewis Spears' tour, um, which I've been supporting around the country for the last month, it's uh, very tiring, but uh, it's really cool to get to perform to such good audiences in the build up to my tour, Uh, and it's also fun just to travel around and see new places every single weekend, like, yeah, I think it's kind of interesting getting to see places in your own country because I feel like a lot of people my age and just more in our generation the thing to do is when you finish school or you finish studying or whatever you take a gap year and you go overseas and it's great you know you get to watch some weird experimental sex shit if you want in Amsterdam and that's good but there's there's a lot of experimental sex shit going on in Adelaide so um actually no Adelaide was great (laughs) that's the thing everyone with this tour what I've realized is everyone shits on the wrong places I think like I feel like like everyone shits on Adelaide like oh Adelaide and stuff like yeah it, it Adelaide was actually one of the best places I found it was one of the most enjoyable places I've been to this year like and everyone goes oh Perth's great Perth was shit <laughs> only because <laughs> I didn't even see any of Perth I'm sure actually Perth is lovely but I'll get to see it on my tour this year because I think I'm staying there for a couple of days. But I was there for like 24 hours and I judged Perth purely on the fact that the venue made us pay for water. Like, are you serious? Like, we're part of the show. We're bringing two... Like, Lewis is bringing 200 people into your theatre and you're making him pay for water if he wants to have a quick sippy before he goes onto stage. You've got to be kidding me. So I hate Perth now. Um, unless you change your water policy, I'm not coming back. Now, look, I am coming back. I'm coming back on June 11th. But, <laughs> but um, no, it just annoys me that people shit on the wrong places. Like, I'm sure this happens in every country as well. Like, everyone's like, oh, that's shit, and it's known for being bad, and you get there, and you're like, yeah, it's not that bad. I th- maybe just Adelaide was kind of lame, but everyone just talks it down so much that I was like, ah, oh, it's not that bad, but everyone talks up Perth. So when one thing went wrong, I was like, nah, this, everyone's fucking wrong. This place is shit. And I just, <laughs> I'm an asshole though. But like everyone says like, oh, Canberra's boring. Canberra's shit. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to give Canberra a chance. Went there. Everyone's bloody spot on. Canberra is boring as shit. <laughs> and even the people who live there know. Like they know 100%. I was talking to people after the show and they were just surprised that we were there. They were so like, like, they were thankful, but they were, they were lovely and they were thankful. They were just like, why are you here? This sucks. Like, no one ever comes here. And we were like, well, I don't know. We just we could sell tickets and it'd be a fun show. It was a great show. Like, the show was fun, but only because you can tell it was the first fun thing they've ever done in their city. So everyone was loving it. But, like, man, and you know what else sucked? We weren't even staying in the city. We were staying. Like, apparently, we didn't realize, you know, like, every place has a shithole. Like Melbourne, like everyone shits on Frankston because it is a shithole. And the suburbs that everyone shits on. We were staying in a suburb called Queen Bean. Or no, Queen Bean. Queen Bean, that's it. And we were kind of walking around and we didn't know where we were because we'd never been there. And we're walking around like there was nothing around. There was no pizza shops. There was nothing. The only thing near us was a Caltex. A Caltex service station. And we lived for 48 hours off service station food. Like pies, frozen shit, it was disgusting, and that was all that was around, and then we kind of went to the venue, and then, like, we didn't know if it was, like, a funny thing or not, and, uh, Lewis went up there, and he was like, so we've been staying in Queanbeyan, and everyone just lost their shit, like, just at the thought of us being in this, pl- in this shithole of a suburb, and apparently we were staying in, like, the joke suburb, like, with all the thefts and all the, just nothing to do this, so, um, but that's why the place was cheap. So we realized very quickly why the place was cheap. It was as cheap as it was. But um, <laughs> but uh, and then we went up to the Gold Coast on uh, Saturday. And everyone like talks up the Gold Coast. Everyone's like, yeah, go up to the Gold Coast. It's great. It's like the scummiest place in Australia. Like, like here's the thing. Canberra was boring, but 
aesthetically really nice to look at. Trees everywhere. The airport is amazing. You know why? I worked out why the airport in Canberra. It looks amazing. It's so well manicured. It looks like the lawns of the Taj Mahal. It's just like there's not a leaf out of place. All the buildings are really modern. There's a bunch of modern art, contemporary. Like, not often does an airport have a con- have what I'd call a contemporary ramp leading up to the departures and arrivals zone. Like, it was just a really cool modern ramp. And we got out of the airport and we were like, holy shit, this is nice. And then I realized it's because Canberra is where all the where Parliament House is in Australia. So it's the first thing, the Canberra Airport is the first thing that all the international politicians see, like all the presidents of China and whatever, when they come to Australia, it's the first thing they see. So the airport is just like immaculate and it's amazing. And then we came in there and just ruined the whole city with our heinous dick jokes and our disgusting mouths. (laughs) But um, yeah, the shows are really fun. Um, What was I talking about? Oh yeah, the Gold Coast. Yeah, the Gold Coast is shit. Um, everyone gives it raps, everyone's like, oh, it's good beaches, good vibes, good nightlife, no, it's scummy, the beach is, oh, the beach is kind of nice, Newcastle Beach was way better, but, um, like, yeah, everyone just gives, gives Gold Coast, like, all these props going, oh, there's theme parks, the theme parks are shit, okay, I'm gonna get to that later, but the Gold Coast is just, like, the most bogan place in Australia, it's honestly one of the scummiest places I've ever been to, during the day, it's actually alright, But the night, it was just like, we saw a fight, like, or not even a fight, like two kids who was too scared to fight each other properly in Maccas. Just like, it was just disgusting. It was a real dirty, dirty place. And I've been there before when I was like 10. I haven't been for years just because, again, there's really no reason to go. But like, yeah, I went there when I was 10, but my parents kind of sheltered me, uh, like from that kind of nightlife stuff. And then... You know, we went out at night, and we were just, it was the first time, actually, as, like, a, a straight white male that I actually felt kind of, like, intimidated and a bit on edge just walking around the streets. Because, like, you know, like, you walk down, like, Douchebag Avenue and then turn onto King Hit Lane, and then you go to the Maccas, and there's, like, a few 15-year-olds. But when I say 15-year-olds, you know those, like, scary 15-year-olds? Like, the, like they hang around in groups of 30 of them, and they're all wearing matching bum bags, and you know they're full of knives. You're just like, you're not scared of the kid, but you're just scared of the weapons that they are holst- got holstered in their socks. So you're just like, yeah, you, you just feel on edge, because all you have to do is a fight breaks out around you, and you just get caught in the middle of it. And then, like if someone pushed me in a Macca's, I would belt the, f- especially if they were 15, it would be my natural instinct to just belt the fuck out of them. And then, <laughs> which wouldn't be great if they had 30 mates and they all had knives. So I was a little on edge and I was like, don't be the King Hit guy, but also don't get King Hit. So I was just like, you know, it was shit. So we just kind of mainly hung out in the hotel and stuff. A, because there was nothing to do at night except for just pick fights, apparently. Like, yeah, we were kind of asked, like, um, people who live in the Gold Coast, and they were like, yeah, we don't come here. Like, at night, they don't go to the touristy city bit, because there's one whole section that's pretty much just hotels and just fast food places, just strip clubs and a beach. Like, that's essentially all it is. And, like, you get flyered in... Like, like people try and fly you into strip clubs and nightclubs and stuff when you're walking down. Like, you're walking down... We were in trackies, wearing tracksuit pants like a jumper, just going to get something to eat at like 10.30 at night after the show. And then all these like dudes start going, hey boys, are you partying tonight? I'm like, do we look like we're partying tonight? And then Lewis just responds every time with, I'm gay. And then it just confuses, but like usually that confuses people just because they're like, wait, what? I didn't ask you if you were gay. And then they would like, that's right, man. We've got some gay clubs in here. And then I was like, I'm a fish. And then that really confused the shit out of them. And then before they have time to be like, wait, did he say it was a fish? You've gone. And that's great. So whenever I had someone tried to fly me into a club, I just stated that I was a fish. And um, <laughs> that's funny. I'm hilarious. <laughs> I think we can all agree that is a funny thing to say to some dickhead who's being paid $13 an hour to try and get you to look at some tits. I mean, really, his intentions are, are right. Like, he's actually, his intentions are quite positive, he's just trying to get you a lap dance, but, you know, he wants you to pay a shitload for it, but it's just, it was such a, it was almost like a, no other city has that, you know, everyone has like a, a bit, like a suburb or whatever in the city that's not 
you know, great. But Gold Coast was just the whole thing was just like the bit outside Flinders Street Station at 4 a.m. where there's just homeless people and like drunk people fighting. But that, but it was like that at 8 p.m. and it was everywhere. It was just gross. Like, <laughs> and it was so bogan that um, the cotton on store there, instead of selling thongs like in normally like on a rack, like a bunch of thongs hanging on a rack outside. They have a thong vending machine next to like a chip vending machine, a water and coke vending machine, and then a thong vending machine. Is that not the most bogan shit you've ever heard of? Like that that's culture right there. And like we saw even their art, Gold Coast art, there's a there's a sculpture of a kangaroo, two kangaroos on a bikini, like, sorry, two kangaroos wearing a bikini on a surfboard. And they, everyone there calls it art. That's not art. That's a display of white privilege and lack of culture. That is the whitest. I was just like, you're, that's not art. As someone who also or like already hates art, I can tell you that's not even art. And the frustrating part about the Gold Coast was it's such a beautiful location, but it's just being wasted by the people and the tourists going there. It's really annoying, because, like, every... You walk down the street, and you're like, this could be nice, but then there's a shop called Condom King next to, like, a Macca's, next to, like, a shitty nightclub, and, like, next to a strip club, and then going on that is another Macca's. And you're just like, what... What are we doing here, really? what What's this... And, you know, like, tourists come there, and, like, you know, and from overseas, and they must think, oh, this is Australia. The rest of Australia is so much better. Like Perth, way better. Adelaide, way better. Dare I say it, Newcastle, way better. Just because that was boring, but like just, you know, you know what I mean? It was just so frustrating to watch people give off such a bad impression of our country because it's really just the worst people from every state. But anyway, uh, so that, other than that, though, thoroughly enjoyed Gold Coast because we, we're up on like the 31st floor of a hotel room and it was the easily the nicest place we'd stayed in and that we've we had a view out along the beach you might have seen it on our instagram and stuff but it was great but um and also this tour has been just honestly i've been shitting on it i realized for 10 minutes but it was a very fun weekend and um the everyone we met at the show was so nice and it was great and uh, that's the thing all the locals there are really nice it's all the tourists like us that make the place shit <laughs> um but yeah, it was great. The shows were fun. Uh, both shows were sold out, so it was it was good. And my show starts at the Comedy Festival. That's where we had to come back to Melbourne uh, on Tuesday next week. So I'm super excited about that. This might oh no, I'll be doing one more podcast, I guess. Uh, and yeah, I'll be having lots of guests on this podcast over the Comedy Festival. Fair few comedians. Um, I also joined uh, Josh Wade on his first podcast actually i think it's going to be the second episode of his podcast um i was a guest so go check that out i'll share it when it gets put out um he's a really good guy it's really cool meeting um lots of other like-minded people on this tour like uh, i got to meet marcus dibble um who's lives in perth and uh josh wade who uh, is now coming down to melbourne and uh everyone's everyone's really nice so we're gonna be hanging out a bit in melbourne so um yeah get around that it's going to be exciting lots of content coming your way fresh from the comedy festival uh that sounds so much cooler than it is because really it's just hanging out in a hotel room and yelling like idiots but um no still it's content so you know content is content whether it's shit or not so look forward to various uh various quality content coming your way (laughs) Nah, it should be good i think it's really interesting to talk to um, other people who do similar things to you, but at the same time uh, have a very different style of what they do and how they do everything, which is uh, I think is very interesting. So yeah, um, what else? Oh, this is a story that happened. This was weird. I don't know if Lewis talked about this on his podcast, so I apologize if you listen to both of our podcasts and we've covered similar ground this week. It's only it sucks because <laughs> like we, we hang out together all day every day, so then when there's a story, it happens to both of us, so we're just, we just talk about the same shit, probably, but I haven't listened to his podcast this week, so I don't know what he talked about, but, um, if, if you didn't, I hope he didn't talk about this, we got offered a lady boy on the way to the Gold Coast show by the Uber driver, that is the most Gold Coast thing of all time, I'm not kidding, we were kind of joking around in the back seat, 
he was like, oh, so what are you boys into? And then uh, Lewis said, oh, Luke's into men. And then the guy laughed. And then Mike, the camera guy, M- Mike from North Borders, who was on the, on the podcast a couple of weeks ago, was like, I'm into transgender people. And he was more just asking us what um, activities we were into, but we just decided to tell him what we identified with sexually. And um, he was like, he th- thought we were being serious. And Mike said he was into transgender people. So he's like, oh, great. And he got out his phone and he's like, I've actually got the number of a lady boy if you want me to, if you want me to give it to you. And he was like, ah, oh. we were like, nah, we were joking. And he was like, oh, okay. And then he showed us the number and it wasn't, the number wasn't in his phone as like Sarah or Pete or whatever the lady boy goes by. It was in his number as just lady boy. And the guy thought it was hilarious. And he's like, you sure I can give you the number? And we're like, why do you have the number? And he's like, oh, she gives me like, if I get her a client, she gives me a bit of a kickback. I'm like, that's the most, like Uber's already illegal. That's the most illegal shit ever. <laughs> it's the most Gold Coast thing. Gold Coast is fucked. Uh, but no, other than that though, that's the thing. It was kind of good to experience just like, oh, it, going on this tour really just makes you appreciate M- Melbourne. And um, I like, for example, I didn't shit on Adelaide when I was there. I wasn't like, oh, this is, this sucks. Like, I was just like, oh, this is a lot better than it is. It's some places you just make you appreciate uh, Melbourne. And it was almost good to go home. Because <laughs> I was just really looking forward to my show on the comedy festival. And I was just all Gold Coasted out by the end. But um, no, I'll be back to Gold... Oh, I'm not going coming to Gold Coast this year. So I can shit on as much as I want. Um, but I'll be coming to Brisbane. So if you're from Gold Coast and you want to see the show... That's the closest I'll be coming. Um, what else do I want to talk about? Oh, this is a thing. This is, a, this is like a, a thing to catch up on. Wait, I've got to look at my notes. Oh, yeah, I've got to talk about while we're on the Gold Coast thing. And this, I want to talk about the theme parks. So thank you to the legend uh, at Lewis's show who gave us free tickets to Dreamworld. What a champ. He pretty much just gave us a free death wish, which was great. So uh, he was pr- <laughs> he's probably trying to kill us. Maybe he... I'm going to sue him for trying to murder me. That's not what you do. You just accuse someone of trying to murder you. Attempted murder. Anyway, that was a dark joke. I'm sorry. We got we went to Dreamworld on the uh, oh, it was Monday, I think. And we got there really late because we were doing podcasts and stuff with Josh in the morning. So we got there at 2.30 and but Mike and I really wanted to go to Whitewater World because we like water slides and water slides are sick. And we knew there was going to be no lines because it was a bit of a shit day. And it was great. There were no lines. But we went to Dreamworld first. And um, we we're like, all right, we'll go on one ride while we're here. So we, and we didn't have to queue up. There's no one at Dreamworld at the moment. Ever since the, uh, if you don't know, uh, a few, uh, oh, it wasn't a few months ago. It was about six months ago. Um, one of the rides had a mechanical, one of the, the Log River ride had a mechanical malfunction. And um, a few people died on the ride, which was horrible. And it was like a massive tragedy. Uh, and really, no one's... The, the park hasn't really recovered since because there's no one there. Like, it was super quiet. We didn't have to queue up for any rides. And it was on school holidays. It, it was a Monday, but still, it was school holidays. And we got straight on the Tower of Terror. And as it, that's the one where, if you've never been to Dreamworld or if you're from overseas, it goes... Uh, you shoot out, and it goes up a huge pole the giant drop pole, and then it goes back down the pole. The ride goes for like 10 seconds, and it's really fun. And as we, we went up, went down, nothing went wrong, and then we got taken into the emergency brake buffer. So if the ride malfunctions, they have an emergency buffer of 50 meters that will slow the ride down because you're going at about 100-something k's an hour, and then you slow down really rapidly. And it took us into the emergency brake bit, and we were like, what just happened? Like, did the ride just stuff up? We almost died. And then a few of the staff members came over and said, hey, the ride just malfunctioned. We have to keep you in these seats uh, until the engineers come. And I got like, I'm not usually claustrophobic because I now couldn't move. Like, we were strapped in by the harnesses. I started to get really, like, nervous and claustrophobic because I was like, what about if we're going to be trapped in here for, like, three hours or some shit like you hear that shit in the news like people were trapped for six hours on top of a ride and you're like that sounds that's like my worst nightmare and we got sitting there and i was so boring like the girl next to me wouldn't speak to me and i like, she was just like sitting there with her friends i was like this sucks right and she was like mm-hmm she just ignored me and like uh, her boyfriend 
was just like not to and I so I tried to talk to her boyfriend. I was like, Yeah, this is the worst, right? And he was like, Yeah. And they just weren't even talking to each other. They were probably having a fight or some shit. And I tried to come in with like my funny banter about the situation. I made I've actually no, I think I made an inappropriate dream world joke. <laughs> That's why they didn't talk to me now in hindsight. But um yeah, it was so boring. And then I started to wriggle round because of the circulation of the uh big you know the strap thing that goes over your shoulder I started to cut into my thighs as we we're waiting there and I didn't know how long we we're going to be waiting there for so I started wriggling around trying to give myself more room and then it clicked tighter on my legs and I was like fuck I'm gonna die like my legs are gonna drop off because the circulation was being cut off a long story short the engineers came and they got us out about 15 minutes later but it was one of the it was one of the scariest 15 minutes of my life I'm like this is how I die I'm gonna starve in this chair, they're gonna make us starve. They better give us, and I was like, they better give me free tickets to Dream World. They didn't, but um, yeah, it sucked. And apparently, like the staff and the engineers came to us. They're like, hey, no need to stress. This happens about three times a day. I was like, it shouldn't. That this shouldn't happen three times. This should never happen. You should be doing the maintenance, not when people are riding the ride. Do it at night. Make sure the rides. Are, like if you're gonna charge people. To go on your shit roller coaster, make it safe, please. Yeah, like the engineer was just so calm about it. He was like, "Yeah, look, we don't know how long you'll be sitting here for, but um, th- this happens quite regularly." And I was like, <laughs> "Fuck off." Um, that's not that's not helpful. And you know, so anyway, then we got off and uh, just uh, left immediately. We were just like, "Fuck that!" And then we went to ride water slides, and it was so much more fun because uh, water slides I just feel. I don't know why. It was just very fun. We were like kids because there was no lines because it was like not a very hot day and there was not even anyone at Dreamworld. So we went to the White Water World, which is next door, and we rode every single water slide four times each in an hour. We were only there for an hour, but it was enough. We just run up the stairs like kids, go down like boom, and then just run back up and then kept going on all the slides. It was sick. Uh, So yeah, that was actually really fun. I wouldn't recommend going dream world though <laughs> no look it's probably great i just probably had like one of the you know a bad experience i'm sure other people have had very positive experiences at, well you know some people have had very negative whatever i'm gonna make another shit joke again about an awful tragedy so i'm gonna move on uh all right what's next oh i just realized i forgot to do the fun fact shit now how are we supposed to have been enjoying this podcast even your week. It's been so long since a fun fact. Shit. Alright, I'll do I'll do the fun fact now. I think this one was sent in by Ben. I'm gonna say Ben on Snapchat. I just I screenshotted it so I don't remember who sent it in. But um This is a great fact, and he actually took a picture of it. It's someone it was I think it was a fact on one of those fact calendars. So um this is a real cracker and um I hope you enjoy it. Essentially, if you haven't heard the fun fact, it is one of the most really Take the, whatever you're doing this weekend, cancel it, because it's not going to be as fun as this fact. If you're doing, if you're going to a wedding, or uh, if you've got like a, a family function, well, they're never fun. But if you've got like a, what's a fun thing to do? Skydiving, if you're an adrenaline junkie, just, I would say you'll never jump out of a plane again after this. Actually, but you'll never jump out of a plane with a parachute. <laughs> you, you might jump out of a plane because you just, you don't want to live anymore. Because you'll never have this much fun again. Anyway, the point is, this segment of the podcast is fun. Fun, 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 with a capital U in the middle. Just for, um, mm, that was a dumb joke. Um, so this fun fact is, <clears throat> and after the fun fact, we just play uh, the fun fact horn. So we can all just, whoo, calm down, we've heard a horn. Let's move on for the rest of the podcast. Because it can't all be this fun, you know what I mean? You, you gotta, it, it's peaks and troughs. All comedy, it's tension and release, tension and release. It can't all be just hysterical, you know, just like we can't all be on a high, just anyway, whatever. I'll, I'm going to read the fun fact. <clears throat> Only 39 US states have laws prohibiting sex with animals. It is indeed the land of the free. So, in 11 states, you can, um, Fuck a duck. (laughs) Sound the fun horn. 
So that was the uh, fun fact. Hope you enjoyed it. What a hella fun fact that was. I didn't actually know that. So, wait, really? In 11 states. So what are some of the... I don't even want to know. Because I'm going to go there. And I'm going to be tempted. Uh, but really, so bestiality... I don't even think that's a real fact. It must be. It looks official. Bestiality is legal in 11 states in America. Man, you guys need to fix your shit. Guns and now this... Get your shit together, America. Jesus Christ. Um, that's That sounds worse than the Gold Coast. <laughs> um, all right. They're up to questions now. I don't think I have anything else to talk about. I mean, the comedy festival has started in Melbourne, so it's like my favorite time of year because I'm a comedy nerd. So I essentially, I really just, we're going to see a couple of shows with a couple of the boys tonight, um, which will be fun. So, um... You know, I'll be on Snap. If you want to, like, follow what I'm doing during the festival, uh, follow me on Snapchat. That's where I post most of the shit. Uh, my shows start in... Oh, yeah, my Snapchat name is just Luke Kidgel with no spaces. Um, what, what else has been going on? Yeah, the, my show starts next Tuesday, which is crazy because I've done one in Newcastle and it went off. And then I haven't done one for, like, one of my own shows for three weeks. So I'm super keen to get back into it. And uh, I'm doing 12 nights in a row, excluding Mondays. So, um, come to that, and it's going to be hella fun. Um, the, the, oh yeah, tonight, if you're listening to this on the Wednesday, I'm doing a two-for-one sale. T- can you, two-for-one tickets for my whole national tour. It's for 24 hours only, so it will have ended by, like, late Thursday night. I'll end it at midnight on Thursday night, okay? So, you've got 24 hours to jump on my website, get tickets to the show, and I don't know why I'm doing this. I just thought it would be fun to see how many people buy tickets. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm just, but I really am losing so much money. Um, but yeah, I, I really just want, I think I can sell out a couple of shows, so go two for one tickets um, on my website, bring your friends, it's going to be sick. So that's literally like $10 a ticket. I'm literally making no money off that, so just come, have a laugh, and uh, I'll tell you a few good dick jokes. I feel like I often say dick jokes. I think I have about three minutes on dicks in my entire hour. But I say that my whole hour is dick jokes. But I talk about other shit as well. Um, cool, that's it. Uh, the comedy festival started. Now let's do some questions. A, I, have I announced that my national tour is on sale? Yeah, I have. I did it last week. And the, thank, you. thank you to everyone. Well, I don't know what I've done in Sydney. I don't know if my videos have gone big there or something. But I am so much bigger in Sydney and Melbourne than any other place. So if you're from Brisbane, Perth, and Adelaide, can you buy tickets, please? Because I'm freaking out that my videos have not, like, have reached a real small portion of your... <laughs> because, like, people, I think maybe people from other states just book later. Because people in from Melbourne, Sydney are used to shit selling out. But, man, I don't know what happened in Sydney. If you're from Sydney, I'd book now because... That shit's going to sell out in my first year, which is crazy. So thank you to everyone who's coming to Sydney already. I can't wait. I'll see you there. Uh, This is the first question uh, this week. It's from... I don't know if you wanted me to keep it um, private. Fuck it. It's from Nathan. (laughs) Uh, I think it was from Nathan. Yep. All right. Thank you for the question, Nathan. Uh, Nathan's question is quite a long one, so let's just get into it. Uh, G'day, Luke. Love all your content, and I can't wait to see your live show. Thank you, Nathan. I can't wait to see you there, mate. Um, To make this short, I need help dealing with my mum. To preface this, I should say I'm a bit of a loner, more specifically the kind that strongly prefers his own company. Okay, so you're a lone wolf. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing like a bit of, uh, you know, me time all the time. Um, so last year for my 18th birthday, my mum threw me a surprise party. As much as I appreciated the effort she, she spent organizing it, I absolutely hated it. Not because of any, shall we say, superficial reason, like having a shit tunes being played, etc. That is shit. When, oh, imagine having shit tunes being played at your own party. Uh, that would suck. But because of two reasons. The first reason is because my mum is fully aware that I don't like parties and I hate surprises. So when she came up with the idea of the, of the surprise party, in my head I had a similar reaction process to that of Elliot Loney in the shit Christmas present sketch that you were in with him and your boyfriend Lewis. Just to clarify who, just in case you have any other homosexual partners. Man, I'm, <laughs> we are so sick. 
of the Luke and Lewis being in a relationship joke. I mean, it's, is it funny? I mean, Emily comes on the podcast and encourages it. It's so old. But if you must know, we are sexually and emotionally happy together. So, so thank you very much, Nathan. Um, <laughs> uh, the second reason is that when she invited everyone to the party, she didn't really invite any of my friends or relatives I speak to. There are about 30 people there on the night, and out of that, roughly 50% were her friends I haven't spoken to ever, and 47% family members, not all I spoke to, and the remaining 3% or so were my friends, the people I actually speak to. As of sending this, my next birthday is next week. Because, and because I have a gut feeling she's going to do it again, I politely asked her not to do anything similar again, rather than take it calmly. She got angry and started calling me selfish and ungrateful before I could explain the reasons I've given to you above. She stormed off in frustration and said she'll do what she wants to do, despite it being my birthday. I want to try to talk to her through it calmly, but I need help on how to spin it to her. Am I just being... A bit of a dick or not. I honestly don't see anything wrong with this if I'm approaching it calmly like I tried, but apparently something is in her eyes. Cheers for responding if you decide to. Good luck with your tour. Thanks, Nathan. Hope to see you there. Um, yeah, man, I think that's your mum's being pretty unreasonable, to be honest. If Really, it's your birthday, and I feel like my parents would be like, well, my parents are like that. They're like, hey, do you want to have your friends over for your birthday, because it's your birthday, and I'll be like, yeah, whatever, but you know what I mean, that's, yeah, I feel like she is almost using your birthday as an excuse to catch up with her friends, which is pretty dog, um, I would say, really, if she's saying you're being ungrateful, I get, she, her perspective is she's putting on something, she thinks she's putting on something fun for you to enjoy your birthday, but really, she's putting on something fun for her, so uh, I think you maybe need a... You said you have calmly explained to her. So um, I think maybe say, hey, I would prefer not to have anything or maybe just a small thing with a couple of friends. Um, so then she doesn't throw you the big thing and that way you just talk to the people you actually speak to. Um, I think that... But yeah, that sucks. I don't, I don't know. This is It's so hard talking to a parent when they do not see your perspective whatsoever. In their head, they're doing the right thing. Because she, I bet she, really, I'm sure she'd have your best interests at heart. And uh, she's just trying to make your birthday special, I think, and invite people around. Maybe she thinks that you, because you said you're a bit of a loner at the start, maybe she might think she has to invite her friends because uh, she doesn't she doesn't know. Do you tell her that you have other friends to invite and that there's other people you like? Maybe you should tell her, hey, I don't actually know these people. And to be honest, I didn't have that much fun last year. And she might listen to you. She might be a bit upset because she's put in a lot of effort organizing it for you. But uh, you said she stormed off. I think try her again, man. Just keep trying to be like, hey, it's awkward because it's a surprise thing as well. Just say, we re- really firm. Say, I really don't want to do anything with my birthday this year mum um and then hopefully she doesn't storm off or do it you know but i feel like if she's already organized something then you're pretty screwed man <laughs> um i don't really know how to deal with the mum who's being unreasonable i think really dude i think if you gave her the reasons uh above that you just gave me she wouldn't do it and she'd understand but you said she stormed off before you gave them i think the best thing to do is just try her again explain exactly what you just explained to me and i think that's pretty reasonable saying hey i if you actually think about it there weren't actually many of my friends at my own party um or you know here's a good suggestion perhaps just do something with your actual friends let her put on the party for you it might be a bit of an average night but then go do something with your own friends go to go to the movies go play laser tag or some shit with your actual friends and do your own birthday thing to celebrate and that way you won't consider what your mum's put on as your main celebration that's just her family thing that she's put on with her friends and you go be there you be polite to everyone but then you go out the next day and play some laser tag because laser tag's sick so that would be my suggestion nathan maybe organize your own thing whatever you like to do if you want to maybe just invite over like three or four friends play some video games have some drinks i don't know how old you are but whatever do what you like to do and then but oh yeah, the first thing I do is speak to your mum, ask her if she 
can not do it and then explain the reasons that you just explained to me of why you don't feel comfortable with that. And then if she still does it, that's pretty unlucky and she hasn't really, you know, taken into account what you've said. If she still does it, then do your own thing, man. I think it's time where you, you sound like you're a big boy, so maybe start just taking control and initiative and organizing your own celebrations if she's not going to be respectful of your you know wishes for your birthday so that'd be my advice man uh thank you very much for listening to the podcast that's cool i'm not sure if i have any other i think i have other questions they're not good so um i think today might be a shorter podcast guys uh because i'm going to try and film a couple more sketches before my festival show starts so i'm going to go do that now with uh Ben Franzini, who is opening for my comedy festival show. So those who are coming to Melbourne will get to see Ben live. He's great, and uh, he's been in a couple of sketches before, so you might recognize him from some videos. And um, yeah, keep buying tickets to the show. So today was pretty much all about trashing Gold Coast and uh, and then my, my stand-up stuff. You know why, though? Because I haven't done anything else. Literally, the last podcast, I think, was Monday or Tuesday, um, and then we left on the Thursday to Canberra and then I haven't done anything else since I've just been doing shows, uh, eating fast food, trying to exercise in between and trying to film videos in between. That's really what touring is. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's the thing. Oh, actually here's what I want to talk about. Actually, I don't think I can live with other males. I like, I always fantasize the idea of like, when I move out, it'd be like, maybe it's just I can't live with Lewis and Mike because they're filthy. It's mainly Lewis, actually. But I, <laughs> um, but I just don't think, like, I usually used to fantasize the idea of, like, oh, you know, it'd be so fun. You move out of a house, you know, like a share house with some mates. You just, you know, everything will be sick because you're all guys. You just, you know, you, you chill out every night. You watch cool you know, you watch Die Hard, this is like, in my head, it was just like, you watch Die Hard, you play laser tag around the house, it'd be the shit, you eat cereal for every meal, that's gonna be awesome, I've been doing that for three weeks, and it is not awesome, I've been living off cereal and noodles and fast food for three weeks, and it sucks shit, males are just the, we're the grossest humans on the planet, like, whenever we stay at a place overnight, it still manages to get dirty, but whenever we stay at a place for three days or four days, it's by the end, we stopped going into the kitchen because it, it was just disgusting. So that, instead of cleaning it, we all just avoided the whole entire living room and kitchen area and stayed in our bedrooms the last night. Like if you saw on our Snapchat story, we thought it was funny so <laughs> we had a bunch of leftover apples, so because we bought like a massive pack, so we thought it was funny to just start throwing the apples at the cupboards because we don't own the house and they smash everywhere and it looks cool in slow mo. <laughs> and um, we started like opening the microwave and then throwing the apple and trying to aim from the other side of the room into the microwave. And then there was by the end. Oh, and we also filmed a video right before we went to Dreamworld where Lewis smashed a full beer bottle over the marble bench. Like, it was part of the sketch. He just cracked it, and it smashed everywhere. And we didn't clean it up. <laughs> like, we eventually picked up the main bits of glass, but instead of cleaning it up, we just let the beer... So we were like, oh, we should mop up the beer and then get a brush and pan and put all the glass in the bin. But we really wanted to go to Dreamworld. And we were like, ah, because because when you don't have like parents, we don't have someone supervising you. Like our tour manager and producer doesn't come to the interstate shows with us. Like they organize it all from Melbourne, and then we go, and we're just children who shouldn't be left unsupervised. And we smashed a beer on a table, and there was glass and stuff everywhere. And we just went dream world and then we just left and then we got home the place stunk like beer we were like oh man there's still glass everywhere like why isn't this being cleaned up because we didn't clean it we're dickheads and then the beer had dried so that was a plus we didn't have to clean up the beer it just evaporated because the sun was coming through the window and then instead of cleaning up the glass off the floor we just made a rule that we had to wear shoes in the kitchen for the rest of the trip <laughs>
<laughs> is that not the most childish and immature thing you've ever heard? That's why I couldn't live with guys. Because in my like a little bit of me got, was like, ah, this is pretty fucked. We should clean it. Like we could really cut our feet. But the other part of me went. But who's going to tell me? Like, if no one's telling me, hey, Luke, clean that up, I just won't do it. I just left it. And it was disgusting. We had apple bits all over the floor. It was just gross. Like, I think people think that touring is really glamorous. And, you oh, you're state to state, on airplanes. You go to the hotels. You do the shows. You get the big applause. You meet all the people at the end. Then you go back to the apartment, cut your foot on a shard of glass, step on an apple, and then go to bed crying because you hate yourself. So that's essentially what touring is. But yeah, I just don't think like I, the, that idea of... Because the first... Here's the thing. Newcastle was like, yeah, boys trip. And we're like, we were all getting along. We were just like, this is... I, we always get along, actually. That's one thing that has been great. We have never um, like, n- never once fought or had a fight on tour just because we're all genuinely really good friends, like me, Mike, and Lewis. So that's been great. But... um. Yeah, the first, like, weekend was like, yeah, boys trip, like, we're just going to stay up late, we're going to watch, like, manly movies, we're going to, like, be, yeah, we'll have pasta, like, we could do a thing, our own. that wasn't manly, I just realized having pasta, but you know what I mean, like, we're going to cook for ourselves, we're going to do what we want, yeah, we're the kings, and then, like, we got to Adelaide and Perth, and we were like, I feel really unhealthy, I think I'm just going to have some rice and go to bed. And we were like, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. <laughs> and that's exactly what we kind of did. And then in the Gold Coast, it got a bit out of hand again. We were just like, oh, let's throw apples at the kitchen. That's the thing. This is what Lewis does. Because he <laughs> he will be eating an apple, and he'll get to the end with the core. And in your own house, you'd be like, I'm finished my apple. I'm going to walk to the bin, put it in the bin, then sit on the back of the couch. But because we don't own the house, we're just staying in a random Airbnb. He just finishes the apple, looks at it, then throws it across the entire room. It smashes against the fridge, goes everywhere, and then we all lose our shit laughing for five minutes because there's now apple on the floor with the glass, and then we just go back to watching TV. <laughs> that's, that's the most pathetic thing ever, but it's so funny. And he, you know, the people, when we got the key, the Airbnb guy, because people don't like, you can tell they don't like leasing out a house for us. Oh, this was funny. Because we do the Airbnb tours, um, and we put them on Snapchat, on Lewis's Snapchat, we just pretty much trash the Airbnb. Some guy was a fan of Lewis and said, hey, please don't ride a bike inside in like the description. So he knew who we were. And he knew we were going to ruin his Airbnb. But we actually didn't ruin that one. We left that one clean. But the Gold Coast one, the guy when we rocked up, so they were illegally running an Airbnb through a hotel. So we were like, man, we can leave this place like a dump and they can't say shit because we'll just dob them into the hotel and they can't run the Airbnb anymore. And so they, they lose money. So they're like, hey, can you please not make it dirty? And we're like, yeah, that's fine. We'll keep it clean. <laughs> then we left. That was just shit. Oh, it was just, it was, it was actually really disrespectful, but very funny because fuck him. Um, (laughs) anyway, that's the, that's my point. I can't live with other males. I don't think like I think, or I could live with guys who have respect for the house. Like, you know what I mean? If I was in a living situation, I would have a lot of respect for everyone's belongings and I would clean up after myself and stuff. But in that situation, it was just, No more than three days. I think I hit my limit by the end of the Gold Coast. I was like, I've stepped on eight bits of glass this morning because I forgot to put on shoes. I want to go home. And um, now I'm home, so I'm very glad. But uh, yeah, that's the end of the podcast, guys. Uh, Thank you very much for listening. Melbourne shows uh, start next week. Interstate shows uh, on sale as well. I'm doing Perth, Adelaide, Brisbane, and Sydney. Um, Already done Newcastle. It was sick. So thank you to the legends who came to that again. Um, oh, two for one sale tonight. So if you're listening Wednesday night or during the day Thursday, the two for one sale is still going. Other than that, the tickets are freaking cheap anyway. If you if you book in a group of four, it's eighteen dollars. So just come. I think a few nights are actually going to sell out. So at Sydney will definitely sell out. Perth is now looking like it could as well. Um, but yeah, it's just what a. It's really humbling because it's my first year and I didn't know if I was going to sell any tickets. So thank you so much to everyone who's got tickets already, and the show is going to be awesome. Can't wait to see you there. Let's do this, Melbourne. Let's do it. I'll see the people opening night next Tuesday. Um, And people are asking me during the week, do you meet everyone after the shows? Of course. 
yeah, I stick around and meet everyone. That's I think that's really important, and uh, I'll sign your shit if you want me to. Um, I signed the weirdest thing in Perth, the weirdest thing I've ever signed. It was a Samurai Jack DVD. I'd never heard of this cartoon. It was like an anime cartoon thing, and I was like, why do you want me to sign this, man? And the guy... I, did I already talk about this on the podcast? I think I've already talked about this last week. I think I'm going clinically insane. I just keep... I don't know where I'm at. Like, I feel... I forget what I have and haven't talked about because I've been super busy all week. Anyway, I signed a weird... Some guy's weird DVD for no reason at all. It was very confusing. But, um... Yeah, that's it. That's the end of the podcast. Go snap up the cheap tickets tonight, everyone, and I'll see you at the shows. Can't wait to see you there. Also, leave a review on iTunes, and I'll read out. If you leave a funny review, I'll read them out next week. Thanks for listening. Have a good one.